Hey there, marketing research students and SPSS users. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to run an independent sample t-test as a way to compare the differences uh, of the average score between two groups on a particular continuous variable. For this exercise, we'd like to compare the, mean, the means between men and women with respect to their objective knowledge about beer. So again, we're using our spring 2014 craft beer 200 record random subset data set. And we do have a gender recode variable that captures our gender information. Let's keep in mind, this will be important in a second, that those with a value of 1 are males, and those with a code of 2 are females. And with respect to our objective knowledge about beer, we have a question called, uh, sorry, a variable called the quiz correct recode. And as I told you previously, there were four individual questions, multiple choice questions, we asked people to answer regarding um, beer trivia. Uh, if they answered every question right, on this variable, they'd be scored a four. If they answered every question wrong, they'd be scored a zero. Uh, one would indicate they got one question right, two, two questions right, and so on. <clears throat> so the question we'd like to ask is, on average, is the average score of a male for number of correct, correct answers to the beer quiz greater than the number of correct answers uh, on average for a female. The way we can do this test is going to analyze, compare means, and since these are two independent groups, if you're a male you're not part of the female group, if you're a female you're not part of the male group, we can conduct an independent samples t-test. Hit reset so I can default it to the, the screen, same screen that you would see. In this case we select our test variable or variables. These are our continuous variables that we want to use to, uh, to test for mean differences. In this case, we only have one test variable. We're just interested in the quiz score. So we'll bring over the quiz correct recode here. For our grouping variable, that'll be our gender question. So we'll bring our gender recode over here. And notice that there's two question marks that says define the groups. So tell, we basically need to tell SPSS what is group one and what is group two. I know for, since I already checked, males are one. Females are two, so I can plug in a one and a two here. So those are the proper codes to put in this case. Hit continue. Then for my options, I will leave my confidence interval at 95% without anyone telling me exactly how confident I want to be in my results. The default level of 95% is typical. And we can actually go ahead and hit OK and just run this. You should have two tables in your output. <clears throat> First table is not actually conducting the statistical test, it's actually just giving you some information about the two groups. First, for males, we have 81 males in our sample with an average score of 2.02, .02, so just about two questions on average for males correct on the quiz with a standard deviation of 1.27, so there's quite a bit of dispersion though in the actual number of questions they got right. Standard error of the mean, 0.14. For females, we had 75, we had fewer females with a mean of 1.24. So right here, just looking at this, we can tell that on average there were men had more questions correct than females, but we now need to account for the fact that we have only a sample. We don't have the entire population. So we have to, are we still confident that there's a difference after accounting for statistical uncertainty and sampling error? Standard deviation of one, so there's a, there's a little less dispersion uh, amongst females than there are men, and our standard error of the mean is 0.12. Okay, so that tells us that we do, we do see that men uh, uh, typically have a, get more questions right than wrong. <clears throat> but I should, but now let's actually see if, if we are still willing to say that they, uh, there's a statistically significant difference between these two groups. So we have this independent samples test, and the first thing you should notice is there's two different rows of data. One of these says equal variance is assumed, and one says equal variance is not assumed. First thing we need to do is verify which is the correct row for us to interpret for this particular test. See this box here that says Levine's test for equality of variances? This is doing exactly that. It's testing to see if the variance between the two groups is equal. If it is equal, we have a much more simple statistical test to conduct and we will interpret the first row of data. If the test for equality of variances is significant, we will reject that the, the variances are equal and we will interpret the second row, which is equal variances not assumed. In this particular case, 
we see, first of all, we should probably glance up here and notice that the standard deviation is definitely different, meaning the variance between these two groups is not equal, but it's also not that different from each other. Based on Levine's test for the equality of variances, it's significant at the point, 0.185 level. Because it's not less than 0.05, we are not confident that the variances are different. Therefore, we are willing to make the assumption, in this case, that we are dealing with equal variances. Therefore, we should be interpreting the first row of data. Since the second row of data is not useful to us for this particular interpretation, I'm going to double click on my table, go to pivot. Oh, it's hanging. My system is hanging for a moment here. Click on pivoting trace. And my pivot that's my pivoting tray, it says assumptions. I'm going to drag that over into the layers. We saw how to do this on a previous video. Oops. Oops. There we go. Close out of here. And now I can toggle between equal variances not being assumed and equal variances being assumed. I'm going to assume that equal variances are the same. Close out here. Now I have one nice row of data. I should never report additional results that aren't necessary to uh, aren't necessary for my reader to see. Now the next question is, is there a statistically significant difference between, difference between these two groups? And the answer is found in this second set of columns, the t-test equality for means. So first of all, the t-test here is 4.177. In this case, because our sample size is large, we can interpret this as actually a z-score. And since this value is greater than the z-score that corresponds to a 95% level of confidence, we can say that yes, we are in fact 95% confident that there is a difference between these two means. Specifically, males uh, typically have, a, on average, get more questions correct than females with regard to beer knowledge. Now since this told us it was statistically significant, there are two other locations in this table that are telling us the exact same thing in just a slightly different language. Next, we can look into this area here that says significance, two-tailed. This is a re-expression of the same idea that we found here when we were interpreting the z-value. The two-tailed here is some value much less than 0 .000. If I double-click on this, maybe I can see the underlying value. Yes, 0 .000049. Since this value is less than 0 .05, we can say yes. Again, we are 95% confident that there is a difference, statistically significant difference, between these two groups. So when we interpret p-values, and that's what this is here, we're looking for values less than 0.05 because we are looking at 95% significance. Next column here is simply the mean difference. This is simply 2.02 .02 minus 1.24 equals 0.78. So this was the actual test. This was the test statistic here. Here's our standard error of the difference. This was calculated for us. Thank you very much, SPSS, for doing the work. Then finally, and I think in many ways this is the easiest column for us to interpret. This is the 95% confidence interval of the difference, our lower boundary and our upper boundary. Notice that there are no, that zero, the value of zero, does not exist between the lower and the upper bounds. What we're saying here is because zero, which would mean there is no difference between these two groups, if the mean difference was zero, see this is the confidence interval of the difference and the difference was not zero, but if the difference was zero, that would mean that there is no difference between these two groups. Or in our case, since there's a lower and upper boundary, if there was a zero somewhere in between here, we would have to entertain the notion that there isn't possibly, in fact, no difference between these groups. However, there is no zero between 0.41 and 1.15. Zero is way over here, far to the left in this, between this lower and upper bound. Therefore, we can conclude yet again, just like the other two, this uh, p-values and the z-values said to us that yes, we are 95% confident that there is a statistically significant difference between these two groups. In particular, we are confident that if we replicated this exact study infinite number of times, 95% of the time, the differences between those two groups would fall between 0.41 and 1.15, or on average, as we see here, 0.78. That's how we interpret an independent samples t-test, and we run one in SPSS. Let's do one more brief exercise. OK, let's click again on Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Samples T-Test. 
you should still have your same test variable here. I clicked out and had to reset my video, so I had to add it back in. But this time, for grouping variable, instead of using a nominal variable like gender, this time let's use a continuous variable. In this case, we're going to use the lifestyle craft beer enthusiast variable. The lifestyle craft beer enthusiast uh, variable was a Likert scaled question that basically that asked people how much they agree with the statement that they are craft beer enthusiasts. Those who were four and five either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. Therefore, we might consider them to be craft beer enthusiasts. While those who scored a one, two, or three, we might not consider to be craft beer enthusiasts. In this case, let's define our groups. In this case, we don't want to use specified values because we have values of one, two, three, four, and five to deal with. Instead, let's use a cut point. Let's use a cut point of 3.5. That should split our continuous variable into two separate groups, fours and fives at the top, threes and belows at the bottom. And we go ahead and, and run our syntax the exact same way as we have previously done. And we actually interpret our results the exact same way as we previously have done. Again, notice we have separated so that people who score greater than or equal to four, those are the craft beer enthusiasts, agreed and strongly agreed groups. On average, they had 2.3 questions right, so they certainly did quite well on the beer knowledge quiz, whereas those who scored less than four had slightly less than one question right on average. We interpret the, uh, if there's a statistically significant difference between these two groups in the exact same way as they did previously. Again, because this value for test of equality between variances is not less than 0.05, we'll assume that variances are equal. And again, our z-value, the t, which comes into a z-value uh, since we have such a large sample, is much larger than the critical z-value for 95% confidence. So therefore, we can say, yes, there is a 90, we are 95% sure that there's a statistically significant difference between these two groups. The, our p-value here, much less than 0.05, says the exact same thing in just a slightly different way. Here's our mean difference, 2.34 minus 1.98. Uh, so that's a and almost a more than an entire question correct difference between these two groups on average. Standard error of the difference, and here's our 95% confidence interval. In fact, we're 95% sure that <clears throat> there's at least a single entire question difference, possibly nearly heading towards two question difference between these two groups. I'm doing a, being a little squishy with the interpretation there, um, but that's again a little consistent with applied marketing practice. More precisely, if we did this study infinity times, we would expect that 95% of the differences uh, we would be that would be somewhere between 1.01 and 1.709. One last comment. While we interpreted uh, this independent sample t-test correctly, we did something a little strange here when we split this continuous variable into two nominal groups. We took a 125 continuous variable and split it down and reduced it to two nominal groups. Typically speaking, this is not desirable. As we'll see later, there's other powerful statistical tests that let us deal with two continuous variables simultaneously, which is obviously the case for both these. The quiz number correct is continuous, as well as the lifestyle question is also continuous. But I did want to show you how, that, how we can do this here in SPSS, because in many applied marketing research settings, this type of practice is commonly done.